I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Amen. 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 May we stand as our youth choir brings us our hymn of the month, Tis So Sweet. Found on page 368 in our hymn.
We don't know what each of us went through to get here, God. But we're so grateful to know, God, that whatever it took, God, that as we nudge with you, Lord, we made our way out here to the house. God, and we've come to give your name the glory and the honor that is due to you, God. Lord, you're so worthy this morning. You blessed us in so many ways, Lord. You brought us throughout another week, Lord God. You kept hurt, harm, and danger back one more time. And for that, we say thank you, God. Lord, we just ask that while you're in our presence, God, move on our hearts today, God. Move in our spirits, God. And let us give you all the glory that is due, God. Touch our youth choir, God, as they need you strong. And touch Reverend Law, God, as she breaks the bread of life on the day. God, let it pyramid in our hearts, God, that we will continue to run on in your name, God. This we ask in all our blessings. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I don't have any announcements from anyone this morning, but I will say um, thanks be to God for yesterday. We had a wonderful youth trip with our Amen. 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 Bring them back home, say that we thank God for a good bus drive. God will put good people in the way. Amen. Sure yes, and sir. we thank the people that sponsored our youth. We pray God for their willingness to help out in that capacity. All our parents that went. And I'm going to thank God for grandparents. Together. Amen. As always, Pastor loves to welcome our guests for coming out and visiting with us this morning. We thank God Amen. for our visitors. And we bless God for our pastor and his absence. Yes. Yes, yes. We thank God for all he is doing here for us here at Mount Sinai. Amen. We ask that you just continue to be in prayer for our church family. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to have another selection. And this morning, the word of God will be brought to us by Dr. Laws. We all, most of us are familiar with her because she's been here a couple of times to preach for us. So let's let, let us heart prepare for what God has to say to her on today. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen.
my former pastor, who is still my pastor, who is your pastor, the Reverend Kenneth Hammond and his lovely wife. I thank God for him not counting it robbery to ask me, to invite me to stand in this place in his stead today. I thank God for our this wonderful minister and preacher and, and prayer warrior who's always on her post. God bless you. God bless you. Sweet spirit, powerful warfare spirit. Amen. And this choir, let's give it up to these men. blessed my heart and, and soul this morning in our ministers and music yeah. everybody that's here as Pastor Hamilton say la di da in everybody yeah. amen because we are all important and amen. worth recognizing in uh, the <coughs> spirit and in the house of the Lord you may let those in amen Amen. Bless you. I will not be before you long unless the Spirit of the Lord says so. Amen. I, um, you know, it's so interesting, and I, I sort of get excited because I've, I've seen this happen before. Just before getting ready to go and preach, sometimes the enemy will try and flick my body with uh, an illness. Yes. And so yesterday, I was out yesterday morning and uh, at a meeting and came back home because I started feeling just, you know, just not myself and sniffling and sneezing. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I don't been around all these cold now and I got cold. <laughs> so I started sniffling and, you know, we just had our family reunion last week at the beach and it was a wonderful time, which is why my husband isn't here because he took the last weekend off and this weekend he has to work and y'all know we got to get money. Yeah. Got to really say no money, no money, honey ain't happy. <laughs> so he had no work day um, and we thank God for him because he's usually my armor bearer and he is my armor bearer um, and uh, so he really regretted that. But at any rate, I was, wasn't still until last night and Sniffling, I took a COVID test, it was negative. I was just, took my temperature, didn't have a temperature. So I think it's either allergies or just getting a summer cold. So you all pray for me because I felt horrible about midnight. Woo, somebody said about midnight. Ah! Yeah. Woo, that's no I, I felt horrible about midnight, but then early in the morning, oh, early, oh, oh. early in the morning, Work. So y'all pray for me that um, that uh, he continues to do a great work, a good work through his healing power. Oh yeah. So it's just the sniffles. Don't don't be afraid. I, I, I took the test and I'm boosted up. But uh, but you know how this coronavirus is. It mutates and it's acting all funny and and uh, unpredictable. And so I encourage you all to take care of yourselves and. Make sure that you are vaccinated. That's my spill, uh, my uh, advice. Uh, prayer works. It does. The faith without works is dead. And and I'm reminded in the Word. John says that I, I. Uh, it is my will that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So it lets us know that good health is important to the Lord because we are his temple. He dwells in our bodies, which is the temple of the Lord. So we are to keep it clean. Yes, clean from all undefiled uh, things, defiled things. And we are to remain healthy so that he can use us. Amen. I used to say to a particular friend of mine um, who is obese, extremely obese, he travels all around the country and even the world um, advocating for the poor. And uh, he's a pastor, reverend, and civil rights and so forth. Um, 
You, you, you're not going to be any good in this movement if you're not taking care of your health. And so we can't sit down here and eat two hamburgers and cheeseburgers at a time and build a thing full of chicken wings and all of that and then expect to get up and go um, and do what God has called us to do without feeling the effects thereof. Amen. That was not the message, just wanted to share that. But there is a word from the Lord today. And if you would, if you will go with me or get prepared out of 1 Kings chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 18, and I will be starting from the 20th verse. But before we go into the word, let us pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you, we honor you, we glorify you. There is no God other than you. Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, all we've ever needed. Your hands have provided. Yes. You are Jehovah Rocky, our healer, and Jehovah yes. Rocky, our God who is most sufficient and yes. El Shaddai and yes. most high El Elyon. Yes. You are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Prince of peace. Yes. So God, right now we know that we need a word from you. We know you know we need a word from you. So speak now, Lord, and give us a word that will take us from this place stronger, wiser, yes. better, more committed yes. to the journey yes. that leads us to you, oh God, in the end. That leads us to a place when we close our eyes, we will hear your voice on that great good getting up morning, saying, well done, yes, yes. thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Yes, yes. Shall make you king and queen over me. Now I, your servant, O oh God, who you call for this appointed time, I ask, Holy Spirit of the Most High God, El Elyon, the great God divine, dwell within this heart of mine. Tear down every idle thing, unclean and unrighteous throne. You dwell inside and you alone. Speak now, for we, your servants, are listening. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I know that when we are taught to prepare our sermons that we are taught and the ushers may do as they are accustomed. I know when we are taught to um, prepare our sermons that we're taught to keep the text short, no more than five verses, keep the theme and the title short and make sure you highlight three points. I'm going to um, venture away or steer away from the first. From the first. Because in the reading of the verses that the Holy Spirit led me through for today, it's also what I would normally do and what we're taught to do is give the background and the context. Uh -huh. So I'm going to cover all of that through the reading of the scriptures. And so young people, bear with me. Let me have your attention. I know it's hard. And actually it's hard for some adults to keep attention. <laughs> Their attention spans are short as well. But I want you to just go with me. Walk with me through 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, the 20th through the 40th. Bear with me, and I promise we will all be blessed. Amen. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And because of its length, I will not ask that you stand on your feet, but that you stand in your heart in reverence, recognizing that God's word is the greatest word. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word yes. will stand. Yes. Yes. So I know we give, we stand and give allegiance and all of that, and normally we stand in the reading. But you may remain seated. 
So Ahab summoned all the people of Israel and the prophets to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? Amen. If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. Yeah. Elijah said, it's, 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 it's real easy. Follow God or follow Baal. Mm -hmm. But the people were completely silent. Sidebar. Isn't it interesting to see the expressions of people when they are called out for being hypocrites? That's right. Or when they are, as, as, as the old folks would say, dibbing and dabbing yes. in things that are holy and things that are unclean or unrighteous. It's never a good look when people are found out. That's right. So they remain silent. They were stunned. They, they, they didn't say anything. And then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Yes. Reminded, can we find any true prophets left? Come on. All right. A whole lot of imitations. Yes. A whole lot of faith folk yes. in pulpits today. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Says, now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood on the altar, but not set fire to it. Then call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord that I serve. Yes. The God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. Yes. And all the people said, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense. So, so we can't be fooled because we know wet wood, right? We know when you put it on the altar, you got to light it in order to set fire to it. There's always something that gives a fake or an imitation away. Mm -hmm. That's another sidebar. That's right. That's true. There's some, I, I'm on all, all social media, so I do um, quick, run, quick Bible lessons and so forth on TikTok. I do this, that, and the other on you know, social media. I'm all on social media. And there's, trend, there, there, there's a thing on social media, on, on TikTok, um, where ads come through. And so, and that's on Instagram as well. And there's an ad that's running on most social media platforms that I'm on, which is all of them. And, and it says, how to tell a fake Louis Vuitton by a real one. Mm -hmm. That the stitching is done where you can't, if it's upside down, then um, that's a real one. But if it's side to side, then that's a fake because it's one piece of leather that is used to make a real Louis Vuitton. There's always something that gives a fake or an imitation away. And then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, you go first, for there are many of you. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it and call of the name on the name of your God. But do not set fire to the wood. Let it stay even. Let it, let, let, let's keep on even playing field. Let's, let's, let's let it be fair. So they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called out on the name of Baal from morning until noon, shouting, Oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no reply of any kind. There's always a way to tell a fake from an imitation, from the real thing. And then they danced and they hobbled all around the altar and that they had made. About noontime, Elijah began to mock them young people, <laughs> saying, oh, you got to shout louder than that, he scoffed. For surely he is God, Baal is God. Perhaps Baal is asleep, daydreaming, or relieving himself, or maybe he is away on a trip, or is asleep and need to be awakened. Aren't you glad we serve a God that doesn't need to be awakened? He neither, neither sleeps nor slumbers, even in the midnight hour, in our crises that keeps us up, walking the floor, or when we get that phone call from a family member or a loved one in the wee hours of the morning, aren't you glad that you're not the only one that's up tending to that problem, but you serve a God who's walking with you? Amen. Thank you Lord. Amen. So they shouted louder, and following their normal custom, they cut themselves with 
with knives and swords until the blood gushed out. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but there was still no sound, no reply, and no response from the gods they served. All right. Then Elijah called to the people, come over here. They all crowded around him as he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel, and he used the stones to rebuild the altar in the name of the Lord, El Elyon, the Most High God. Yes. Then he dug a trench around the altar, large enough to hold about three gallons. He piled wood on the altar and cut the bull into pieces and laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, fill four large jars with water and pour the water over the offering and the wood. Amen. And after that, they had done this. He said, do the same thing again. I want you to really saturate this. Yes. And when they were finished, he said, now do it a third time. Mm -hmm. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Threes, right? Yes. So they did as he said, and the water ran around the altar and even filled the trench. Yes. Meaning it was not just saturated, but it was surrounded in water. Yes. At the usual time for the offering, the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O oh Lord! God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, yes, yes. prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Mm -hmm. Prove that I have done all this at your command. Oh, Lord, answer me. Answer me so that these people will know that you, oh, Lord, are God yes. and that you have brought them back to yourself. And immediately... The fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up all the water in the trench. Yes. And when all the people saw that, they fell down on the ground and cried, Lord, your God, he is God. Yes, the Lord yes. is God. He is God. So I might use for just a thought for us to chew on the rest of the week and to hold on to. Looking for the real thing. Oh, my God. Distinguishing between an imitation and the real thing. Mm -hmm. yes. We are living in, as you all, I'm sure, will attest. We are living in perilous and confounding times. Amen. We are living in revelation times. Yes. When prophecies are coming true. Mm -hmm. Climate change, yes. natural disasters, yes. snowing where it never snows, yes. droughts where yes. it's never sunny, yes. wars, murders. Yes. Children against parents, parents against children, people who have, seem to have a reckless disregard for all life and so they will go into an elementary school and kill innocent kids or they will go into a grocery store and kill seniors. Yes. They will even come into a house of worship That's right. as we saw or have seen many times including in South Carolina Amen. and Mother Emanuel. Yes. We are living in revelation times when the enemy, Satan, yes. the, the angel who was kicked out from heaven, who brought some demons with him, yes. are occupying every crevice, every place, every nook, every cranny of our society. From the in perilous and confounding times where the evidence indicating our moral 
and spiritual regression. Going yes. back. Yes. Backwards is strong. Yes. The late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. eloquently spoke about it in this way. He stated in one of his speeches, one of the great problems of mankind is that we suffer from a poverty of spirit which stands in glaring contrast to our scientific and technological abundance. The richer we have become materially, the poorer we have become morally and spiritually. Yes. Which is why, as I preached a family member, a young child, young man, preached his funeral, who was one of the young victims of gun violence in Durham, preached Thailand's funeral a couple of months ago. And in the presence, or in the church, were his friends, his buddies, yes. some who came in to the church clearly identifying as members of a gang. They came in some with the surgical mask for COVID and others because they knew there was going to be a heavy presence of law enforcement there. Tylen was the young man who was killed at the gas station in Woodcroft. He was my mother's great nephew, my uncle's grandson. So some came into the church with full masks, ski masks, all. Mm -hmm. Understanding that they didn't want their identity to be known. Mm -hmm. And I preached a word about how America is the biggest trap house. Yeah. I won't unpack that right now. Right. But America is a trap house. Yeah. And I had one of the young men come up to me. First of all, five got saved that day or stood up. And one of the young men who was in the ski mask said, Reverend, I, I, I appreciate that message, but we can't let this go. We got to handle this. Another one came up during the repast and said, I heard what you were saying. Pray for us. But we got to take care of this. I couldn't help but think how in a society where young men will kill each other yes. over drug turfs and wars, yes. morally bankrupt, seeking material possessions, yes. being able to wear the best clothes and shoes and drive the nice cars that they see rappers brag about. materially, the poor, we have become morally and spiritually. Ministers, evangelicals, making a mockery out of God and Jesus. And as a result, many people, especially our young people, have lost their faith in organized religion and want nothing to do with coming to the church. Don't believe me? Look at the pew. Polls. Young people that we raised, that were raised by our grandparents and by our parents are now turning their back on the church. Why? Because they're finding it hard to distinguish the real thing from a faith. They're finding it hard to distinguish how in the world can you bring me to church on Sunday and by the time we make it back home, you cussing somebody out on the phone. Oh!
the imitation and the fake from the real thing. Yes. 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 So yes, people are looking to the church for signs mm -hmm. and wonders. Yes. That's my point number yes. one. And something better than what they have. Yes. All too often they are getting an experience in church. Churches are becoming mega churches yes. because they have charismatic preachers yes. and because they understand they've cracked the code a long time ago. They know that especially African Americans that we are an emotional a soulful people. Yes. And so all you gotta do is put the right beat with the right lyrics and have a singer who can sing like Aretha Franklin in the church and you've got my attention but can you take me deeper in the soul? Can you give me something that I can hold on to when the singing is done? Yeah. Imitation. Yeah. From me. From the real thing. They're wondering. Yeah. Mega churches are filled up. The pastor gets to fly on jets while I, members are saying, can barely put gas in my car. They're looking beyond the imitation in search of the real thing. They need to see someone who can just put a whole lot of stuff on the altar. Now let me, just, let me just put a pin here. 
Also in the pictorial archives of the 50s and the 60s, we also saw hot pants. So I'm not talking about, but I'm talking about the way in which we carry ourselves. Why are our children running amok? Because they cannot distinguish imitation from the real thing. Elijah said, if you're going to serve Baal, serve Baal. If you're going to serve God, serve God. Don't be a hypocrite. Why? Because the people get confused. And then they look at the fake and think it's real. And they look at the real and think it's fake. What are you talking about? They look at a mega church and think that's really where God is showing up. Because a whole lot of people are there. And the pastor is prospering. And they'll come to a smaller church and feel like he's dying. When the reality is, I would love to most likely come if I'm in a deed to a smaller church. And call on the lost who I know and the Fire brought yes, to a wet altar. Yes, so people are looking for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. The Holy Spirit tells us, or in many ways, it strengthens us. The last thing the world needs is to see complaining, weak, defeated, hypocritical saints. How can we uplift the brokenhearted? How can we speak a word that will set the captives free? Yes. How can we say that we are blessed mm -hmm. and all of the things we do is curse? No. I'm not talking cuss. Mm -hmm. I'm saying curse. Because yeah. y'all might need to pray for me sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I'm talking curse. Not cuss. Because every now and again, the word falls on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. And people need to see us moving in a way that they are certain that it is a powerful God yes. behind what we do. Yes. And so don't get fooled by numbers. Elijah was one. That's right. Baal had 450. That's right. Amen. 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 Jesus used how many? In the initial 12. Yeah. But as he went around, there were others. Yeah. It doesn't take a whole lot. Amen. It doesn't take a whole lot. Where two or three yes, are gathered, yes. God is in the midst. Yes. Point number two. We have to be certain that we ourselves know, that we know that we know who God is and what God can do and what God requires mm -hmm. versus the converse. There's always too much emphasis on things that either A, aren't implicit or explicit in the word of God or that Jesus didn't do. All right. Man. People blaming a whole lot of stuff on stuff Jesus didn't say or do. All right. And it's not in God's word. Yeah, the truth. Now I know this is not a good topic in our church. Uh -huh. But this whole abortion thing. Yes. The whole decision of the Supreme Court. Yes. Yes. The problem I had with it. One, I believe that that truly is a decision that a person should make in consultation with their doctor, their pastor. That should, it ain't up to me. That's right. It's not up to me. Whether I believe in it or not, that's, your business ain't my business. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, and the reason I'm clear on this is because I searched the scriptures and I just to, so that I and I went and I looked and read and read and read. Nowhere does Jesus reference it. Nowhere 
about infanticide, yes. killing children, Amen. either <coughs> sanctioned That's right. or instructed in times of war. Go in, destroy everything, men, women, and children. That scripture sounds familiar? So the point I'm making is not to sell an ideology or a position on abortion. That's not what I'm doing. What I am doing is simply saying that we get a whole lot of people turned off because we attribute things to Jesus that he didn't even say. In fact, when the woman of the adulterer was brought to him and asked to be stoned, church in the area and um, some years ago um, he came to us he was dealing with something and we required a lot of money oh. and so my husband and I were like you know we're not in a position to do all of it we can help what about your church because we knew by then this pastor was growing in notoriety and he was you know going to Georgia and all these different places. He's on TV now. He's doing this and the other. And my brother-in-law was one of his security at times. He was a driver at times and so forth. Real close. Love, love, love his church and his pastor and rightfully so. But when he came back and he said, no. He said, I don't, I don't want to bother him and ask. I'd much rather get it some other way. That bothered me. <coughs> because the word says, bring in all your tithes, and here's the tithe, into the storehouse, and prove me now here with, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven, and pour you down a blessing, that you shall not have room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for my name's sake. That's the word. Amen. So true. Me in the storehouse means when I come and I'm hungry or in need. It doesn't mean natural food. It means when I'm in need. And so I was glad. I don't know if you all saw Creflo Dollar's confession about time. Now people in the chat said, well, give back all the money you done made a mint off of and become a multi-millionaire if you never believe that. So I, I, you know, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. But all too often, if people haven't tithed, if they haven't given to a church, but they've been coming, that's right. They've been supporting the ministry. They can't get anything out of the church. That's not of God. That's right. God says, why would you turn someone away and say no? And 
then the third point is we've got to show the world what we're working with. Our God neither slumbers nor sleeps, but he is able to do anything. And we gotta, we got to let our young people know that we serve the God who created yeah. and holds the whole world yeah. in his hand. That, that, that that's not just a song that they sing, that that is an affirmation that God's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the little bitty baby in his hand. He's got Today, our people, young and old, are hurting and dealing with all kinds of trouble. COVID has taken people out. So, and we had to bury loved ones in non-traditional ways. Yes, yes. Couldn't say goodbye to some of them. Y'all remember in 2020 when you couldn't even go into the hospital? Your loved one died there alone. Or surrounded by nurses and doctors. Hopefully they had or prayerfully somebody around them that cared. Trouble on every side, monkeypox outbreak. Everywhere you turn to, trouble on every side. Everywhere you go, there's trouble. I'm reminded of that song that was sung in the United Holy Church that I grew up in. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere you go, there's strife. Yeah. Everywhere you go, there is something. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. But my God yeah. is standing by. Yeah. We need to let people know and show them what we're working with. Natural and man-made destructions and calamities are taking an immense toll on human life across the globe. HIV and AIDS is on the rise again. Monkeypox, poverty, wars, hurricanes, economic ruin. Black women are leaving this world with dementia and, 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 and all. She's been used to stretching out a dollar, but now there's less and less. Mm -hmm. yes. The ends are no longer meeting, and things are beginning to look worse more than they ever had. Mm -hmm. Fathers and mothers who've worked all their lives so that they can leave an inheritance to their children are losing yes. properties, losing the income that they say. People who thought that in retirement they'd be living their glory days. Amen. But because their children lost their job or their grandchildren need, they got to pinch off, as my grandma would say, they got to pinch off something all the time. Mm -hmm. And the bread is getting small. Yes. But one thing I'm glad about is we can always depend on God yes. to come through for us. Yes. Little becomes a lot when we place it in God's hands. Yes, we got to show the world what we're working with. We got to show them that it doesn't take a whole lot to please God's children. Right, that we are not simply set or we don't have our mindset on material things, but we've got our mindset on working and pleasing God until we close our eyes. And that doesn't mean that we don't want the good things in life here on earth, but that does mean that we understand if that for whatever reason God Thank <laughs> you. 
The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasures in him, meaning everybody who's tried Jesus, they know, as the song says, they found him to be all right. His work is honorable and glorious and righteous. His righteousness endures forever. Mm -hmm. We got to remind them that he has made his wonderful works mm -hmm. to be remembered. Yeah. And the Lord is gracious Amen. and compassionate. Amen. Don't grow weary in your well-doing. Know that our God is still God. Yes, yes. And he moves and he works in mysterious ways. He will open doors yes. that you thought were closed. Oh, yes. And he will close those that need to stay shut. Yes. Show the world today. Show the world the difference between an imitation and the real thing. Yes. Let them know Although they slay me, yes. yet will I trust them. Yes. Though I've been tried on every side, yes. I believe God's word that says we can endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm standing on God's word that says, have you not heard and do you not know that the God that I serve, neither slumbers nor sleep. Serve the God of God, the God of hosts, or Baal, mm -hmm. the God of this world. Trust. I'm banking on him. Yes. I'm banking on God. Yes. El Elyon. Yes. The most high. Yes, yes. God bless you. Amen. Amen.
God, we look forward to the week ahead. I pray that all my hearts and minds are clear and as we stand to depart from this place. Father God, we're grateful for again for this opportunity, Lord. We pray that all that was done was pleasing in your sight, God. And as we go forth this week, God, help us determine the fake from the real God. And help us to just focus on serving the real God, which is you, God. We love you today. We bless you. And we lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, as we come out, we leave out the tithes and offerings.